At one time, the F-22 Raptor was the ultimate symbol of U.S. technological supremacy, the undisputed leader of its generation. But as technology evolves at breakneck speed and new threats emerge just as rapidly, even the best aircraft eventually require upgrades. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the F-22's journey, the improvements it has already received, and the potential future of what's being called the F-22 Super. And don't forget to help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Back in the late 1980s, as the Cold War was still shaping military strategies, the U.S. Air Force needed a next-generation stealth fighter to replace its aging F-15 Eagles and F-16 Fighting Falcons. The program was named the Advanced Tactical Fighter, ATF, with the goal of creating an air superiority jet capable of dominating the skies over Central Europe in case of a Soviet or Warsaw Pact invasion. Two companies faced off in this historic competition, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman. Northrop's YF-23 prototype emphasized extreme stealth and high speed, while Lockheed's YF-22 offered a more balanced design that was cheaper and less risky. In the end, the Pentagon chose the YF-22, later evolving into the production F-22 Raptor. Before it became operational, Lockheed engineers spent hundreds of hours refining the design. They reduced the wing sweep angle from 48 degrees to 42 degrees, reshaped the vertical stabilizers, improved the radome for better radar performance, and even adjusted the fuselage edges to enhance stealth and aerodynamics. After all these refinements, the aircraft's airframe life increased to 8,000 flight hours, and its stealth characteristics were unmatched. The Raptor's first flight took place in September 1997, piloted by Alfred Paul Metz. It wasn't until December 2005 that it officially entered service. What made the F-22 revolutionary was its combination of stealth, supercruise, sustained supersonic flight without afterburners, extreme maneuverability, and advanced sensor fusion, all in a single platform. Powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-119 turbofan engines with thrust vectoring nozzles, the Raptor could outperform even the legendary F-15 Eagle. In fact, during air combat exercises years before it officially entered service, F-22 test pilots killed 12 F-15Cs in less than two minutes, despite the Eagle's perfect 104 promise zero combat record. Stealth was the Raptor's biggest weapon. Its shape smoothed out radar reflections, it used radar absorbent coatings, and its its serpentine air intakes hid the engine fans from radar. It even had cooling systems to reduce infrared emissions, making it harder for heat-seeking missiles to lock on. To this day, the F-22 has the smallest radar cross-section of any fighter jet in service, around 15 times smaller than the F-35 Lightning II and over 100 times smaller than China's Chengdu J-20. On top of that, its AN-APG-77 AESA radar was the most advanced of its time. Paired with avionics capable of fusing sensor data into a crystal clear picture of the battle space, its mission computers could process 10.5 billion instructions per second, turning the pilot into a battlefield commander rather than just a trigger puller. The Raptor could even act as a mini AWACS, detecting and identifying threats for other friendly aircraft. Even though the F-22 was born in the late 1990s, it remains one of the most advanced stealth fighters ever built. Over the years, it has received several subtle but critical upgrades to stay ahead of evolving threats. Since 2021, some F-22s have been spotted with chrome-like surface coatings, further reducing their infrared signature and making them even harder to detect, despite rapid advancements in modern infrared search and track IRST systems. Its stealth design was revolutionary for its era. The Raptor uses continuous curvature on all surfaces, fixed geometry serpentine air intakes to hide the engine fans, and radar absorbent material coatings. All these factors combine to give it an almost invisible radar cross section. The internal weapons bays were also designed to maintain stealth. Unlike most fighters that hang weapons on external pylons, the Raptor carries its missiles internally, only opening its bay doors briefly to fire. This reduces radar reflection even during combat. And while the Raptor was built primarily for air dominance, it also has a secondary ground attack capability, capable of dropping precision-guided bombs like the JDAM, although this has never been its primary mission. But stealth alone isn't enough anymore. Modern warfare demands smarter sensors, better networking, and longer-range weapons. Lockheed Martin hinted at adding an infrared defensive system, IRDS, to the Raptor, a feature originally planned but cut due to budget constraints. Recently, the Air Force revived the idea of integrating IRST sensors as part of a new sensor enhancement package. Additionally, in 2024, 
photos surfaced of Raptors with low observable external fuel tanks designed to extend their range without completely sacrificing stealth. This is critical for operations in the vast Pacific theater where distances are enormous and aerial refueling isn't always an option. Like traditional drop tanks, these can be jettisoned mid-mission, instantly restoring the jet's full stealth profile. Another long-awaited upgrade was the addition of a helmet-mounted display, HMD. Originally, the Raptor didn't have one, forcing pilots to rely solely on the head-up display. But with the integration of the Thales Scorpion HMD in 2024, F-22 pilots finally gained the ability to look and shoot, especially important when using AIM-9X Sidewinder missiles, which can lock onto targets far off the aircraft's centerline. The coolest part? The Scorpion HMD is modular. Like a smartphone, it can receive new features via software updates, keeping it future-proof without requiring an entirely new helmet. HMD, and speaking of weapons, the F-22 is now being equipped with the AIMI 260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, Juritem. This is a beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile, Beaver IM, designed to outrange modern Chinese and Russian missiles. With the AAMI 260, the Raptor regains its edge in long-range engagements. Another game-changing development is the Collaborative Combat Aircraft, CCA, program, where the Raptor will act as a quarterback for unmanned loyal wingman drones. These drones can scout ahead, jam enemy radar, or even carry additional weapons, effectively multiplying the Raptor's combat power without risking the pilot. All these upgrades are laying the groundwork for what some are calling the F-22 Super, a significantly enhanced version of the Raptor. HM, despite its legendary reputation, the F-22 Raptor has never faced the kind of high-end threats it was designed for. Most of its real-world combat record involves relatively simple missions, like intercepting unidentified aircraft, or more recently, shooting down Chinese spy balloons over the US in 2023. But with the rise of near-peer adversaries like China and Russia, the Raptor is once again in the spotlight. In a meeting with business leaders in Doha, former U.S. President Donald Trump called the F-22 the most beautiful fighter jet in the world and hinted at a modernized F-22 Super program. So what exactly would an F-22 Super look like? For starters, sensor fusion would reach an entirely new level. The current Raptor already processes battlefield data through two massive common integrated processors, SIP computers, each capable of 10.5 billion instructions per second. But an upgraded Super Raptor could adopt even faster processors and AI-driven data fusion, giving pilots a clearer, more automated picture of every threat in the sky. Next would be extended range and survivability. Low observable external tanks are just the beginning. A future F-22 Super might feature conformal fuel tanks, blending into the airframe to preserve stealth, allowing much longer missions deep into enemy territory without refueling. Weapons are another key area. Beyond the AIM-260 J-80M, the Super Raptor could carry next-generation hypersonic air-to-air -air missiles or even directed energy weapons for missile defense. Its internal bays could be adapted for more versatile payloads, including small drones or electronic warfare pods. The Collaborative Combat Aircraft CCA concept would also be central. The F-22 Super could act as a mothership for loyal wingman drones, commanding a swarm of semi-autonomous unmanned aircraft for reconnaissance, electronic warfare, or even offensive strikes. In terms of stealth, an F-22 Super might adopt new radar-absorbing materials, RAM, that are more durable and easier to maintain than the delicate coatings on current Raptors. These new materials would reduce maintenance downtime, a major problem for the current fleet. Another potential leap would be network-centric warfare integration. While the Raptor was designed with a very secure but isolated data link, future upgrades could allow seamless communication with F-35s, B-21 Raiders, and other NGAD platforms without compromising stealth. But here's the reality check. Restarting full-scale F-22 production would be astronomically expensive. Experts estimate that bringing the assembly line back online, rebuilding the supply chain, and hiring specialized engineers would cost over $60 billion. That's why the most likely scenario is not building new Raptors, but instead upgrading the existing 187 aircraft into the super configuration. This way, the US Air Force extends the Raptors' lifespan into the 2040s and beyond. 
buying time for the next generation air dominance and JDF fighter to fully mature. The F-22 Super wouldn't replace the F-35 or the upcoming B-21 Raider. It would complement them, filling the niche of a high-end air superiority fighter capable of defeating even the most advanced enemy aircraft. Until NJD arrives, the Raptor remains the sharpest sword in America's arsenal, and with these upgrades, it could stay dominant for another two decades. So, what do you think? Should the U.S. invest in creating an F-22 Super to keep its edge, or focus entirely on the next-generation NGAD platform? If you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the Not Different Shows notification bell for more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.